The crime is that you tried to steal my world. Welcome to Culture Screen, where we analyze culture. In this episode, we are summarizing the Odyssey written by Homer in the 8th century BC. This is part 2 of a two-part series. Here, you will find books 13 to 24 concisely summarized. To watch part 1, click on the link in the description or at the end of this video. In book 13, Odysseus finally leaves King Alcinous's land of Phaeacia and he finally lands on Ithaca after setting sail. By the time he finally arrives and sets foot on Ithaca, 20 years have passed since he was last home. Here, he begins his second journey to reclaim his throne again. Again. Poseidon is of course upset that Odysseus is safe and sound and ends up sinking the Phaeacian ship that brought Odysseus home safely as they return to Phaeacia. This fulfills the prophecy mentioned by Alcinous earlier to Odysseus. The goddess Athena then appears to Odysseus and she tells him not to reveal his true identity to anyone as he will have to get rid of the potential suitors still fighting for his throne. Athena ends up turning Odysseus into an old poor man. Athena then leaves Odysseus and goes to look for his son Telemachus who is in Sparta still looking for him. In book 14 we see Odysseus walks over to the hut of his old servant friend Yamus who is still living in the same hut by the same hill as when Odysseus left Ithaca. As Odysseus nears the hut he is attacked by Yamus's dogs and Yamus protects Odysseus even though he sees him as a complete stranger. Odysseus cannot be seen as he truly is because he is wearing the disguise given to him by Athena but this does not stop Yamus from protecting him. Odysseus holds true to Athena's request and he does not reveal his true identity to Yamus. But Yamus' hospitality does not stop there. He goes on to provide him with clothing, food, and gives him some water. Odysseus ends up asking him to tell him what he knows about Odysseus. Yamus responds by saying that many men have come and gone throughout the years and shared that Odysseus was still alive, but Odysseus has never returned. He is sad because Odysseus was a great ruler and he asks to change the topic of conversation to prevent himself from becoming even sadder. Odysseus tells him that he knows Odysseus will return soon. When Odysseus asks him about the current state of Ithaca, Yamus describes the current situation Queen Penelope is faced with back home at the palace and he adds how the potential suitors are currently fighting over Odysseus's throne. Yamus also shares how Telemachus has grown into a great young man. As night falls, Yamus gives Odysseus his bed and heads out Outside to sleep with the pigs. Odysseus is glad to see how well Yamus has cared for his pigs in his absence. In book 15, Athena ends up guiding Telemachus into returning home to Ithaca. She tells him that his mother is about to marry one of the suitors and that he should seek Yamus. She also warns Telemachus that the suitors have prepared an ambush for him as a way of taking him out. As Telemachus leaves Menelaus, the king of Sparta, we catch up with Odysseus and Yamus. Yamus tells Odysseus that his father Laertes is still alive after all these years and that he prays for his safe return. In the end of book 15, Telemachus finally lands on Ithaca. In book 16, Telemachus heads over to meet up with Yamus and Yamus is ecstatically happy to see him. Here he also meets Odysseus but he is still disguised as the old beggar. Odysseus sees Telemachus and moves out of the seat to give it to Telemachus as Telemachus is of royal descent. But Telemachus waves him down and asks him to remain seated as he sits down in another seat rather than having the beggar move over. The old beggar Odysseus tells Telemachus that he wants to take out Penelope's suitors but Telemachus knows the old man would not stand a chance at taking them all on himself. As soon as Yamus heads out to tell Penelope of Telemachus' safe arrival, Athena presents herself to Odysseus. Athena tells Odysseus that she will continue to help him until he can take out all of the potential suitors. She ends up removing Odysseus' disguise temporarily so that Telemachus can see that his father is actually with him. Telemachus cannot believe what he is seeing at first and assumes that the old beggar is a god disguised as Odysseus but Odysseus assures him that he is in fact his father. Odysseus explains that he was able to transform thanks to Athena. Telemachus hugs Odysseus and finally father and son are reunited at last. Odysseus proceeds to instruct Telemachus of his plan to take out the suitors. He tells Telemachus that he is waiting to 
hear from Athena as she will instruct him on when to strike. Odysseus further adds that he must hide all weapons and armor in the palace while they keep his true identity a secret. In Book 17, Telemachus leaves Yamus' hut and heads to the palace. He first bumps into his nurse, Eurycleia. Penelope exits her chamber and hugs Telemachus. Penelope tells Telemachus that at times she believed she would never see him again, especially after he left without telling her. Telemachus asks Penelope to go get cleaned up so they can start making offerings to Zeus. As Yamus walks behind Telemachus, they are mocked and beaten by some of the servants of the suitors. Melanthius, one of the suitors' subordinates, kicks the old beggar while Antonis insults him as well. Odysseus responds to Antonis' insult and is then brutally struck with a stool. When word spreads about the physical abuse the two men are receiving at the hands of the suitors' men, Penelope asks for the beggar and Yamus to be brought to her. Odysseus does not want to blow his cover by being seen walking into the queen's room and chooses to stay behind and Yamus excuses himself to go care for Odysseus's pigs. Remember, I am summarizing other works of literature, so subscribe and click on the notification bell to be reminded when I upload the next summary. Also, let me know what your favorite work of literature, TV show, or movie is so I can summarize it in the future. Thank you for your support. This is a general summary of the Odyssey. If you would like a detailed summary where I go in detail into every chapter, leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to turn this into a mini-series. In book 18, another beggar named Arnis picks a fight with Odysseus. He feels as if the old beggar is encroaching on his territory and chooses to challenge the old beggar. Of course, because he cannot see it is actually Odysseus. Odysseus tries to talk some sense into Arnis, but Arnis refuses to listen to Odysseus's peace talk and Athena drops in and gives Odysseus super strength and he proceeds to take out the beggar. But he takes his time and does not do it quickly or so easily as to blow his cover. Odysseus chooses to simply knock Arnis out rather than killing him. Athena then makes Penelope much more beautiful than she already was and she persuades all the potential suitors to present her with a gift. In book 19, as the day turns to night, Odysseus reminds Telemachus again to make sure he removes all weapons out from the great hall for the next day. While Odysseus is still disguised as an old beggar, he speaks with Penelope. Penelope ends up sharing how she managed to delay the potential suitors for so long. During their conversation, the old beggar shares that he is certain Odysseus will return within the next month. This makes Penelope extremely happy and she tells the old beggar that he will be an honored guest in her palace. Penelope sends Eurycleia to clean the old beggar's feet and when she does so, she recognizes a scar on the beggar's leg and it looks just like the scar that belonged to Odysseus. Eurycleia immediately realizes that the old beggar is in fact Odysseus but before she can tell Penelope, Odysseus makes her promise to keep his identity a secret just a while longer. Penelope then shares with Odysseus that she will finally decide who she will choose to be her suitor the next day. Penelope says that she will set up a shooting competition where the men will have to string Odysseus's bow and shoot an arrow through 12 axe heads. The first man to do so will be her new husband. Odysseus agrees and approves it to be a great idea. In book 20, Odysseus thinks up a strategy to take out all of the suitors when they are all gathered together in the great hall. When he arrives at the feast, Odysseus is abused by the potential suitors as they hurl insults at him and physically harm him. In one instance, one of the suitors named Tisippus decides to throw a cow's foot at Odysseus, but he misses when Odysseus ducks under the foot and the foot strikes the wall behind him. In book 21, Penelope shows up to speak to the suitors in the great hall. She brings Odysseus's bow and tells the suitors about the competition she will be holding. She addresses the suitors and tells them that they will have to string the bow and shoot an arrow through 12 axe heads and the winner will be rewarded with her hand in marriage. The bow, however, is too strong for the suitors to set up and no one can even string the bow together. Since they are not strong enough to string the bow, of course, the men know they won't be able to shoot an arrow from the bow either. While they are struggling to string the bow, Odysseus, still in disguise, asks the servants to lock all the doors of the great hall. Odysseus then takes the bow and swiftly he is able to string it. He then shoots an arrow right through the 12 axe heads effortlessly. In book 22, with the help of Athena, Odysseus faces the suitors and shows them his true identity as Odysseus at last.
Odysseus proceeds to take them all out, one by one, arrow after arrow. After he is done with the suitors, he turns to the twelve servants who were not loyal to his family while he was gone, and commands Telemachus to take their lives as well for their transgressions. In Book 23, Euryclea heads to Penelope and wakes her up. She tells Penelope that Odysseus has finally returned and was actually the old beggar all along, but Penelope does not believe her. They continue to argue, but Penelope ends up leaving her palace and goes to see Odysseus regardless. Penelope is skeptical even when she sees Odysseus and Telemachus grows upset that she doesn't give Odysseus the proper welcome he deserves. But Odysseus tells Telemachus that Penelope just needs some time and that she will believe eventually. Penelope does not believe Odysseus is who he says he is until he shares how their bed was constructed by him out of an olive tree and how their bed is part of the olive tree. Penelope's knees go weak as she cannot believe Odysseus has finally return. In the end of book 23, Odysseus tells Telemachus to stage a wedding ceremony to make it look as if Penelope chose one of the potential suitors. He does this as a way of stalling and hiding the news of all the potential suitors being taken out in his great hall. In the final book, number 24, Odysseus goes to meet his father Laertes. At first, Laertes also does not believe Odysseus is who he says he is, but Odysseus shares some stories only they would know, and Laertes ends up hugging and kissing Odysseus. Laertes warns Odysseus that the potential suitors belong to the most powerful families in all of Ithaca, and that now they will surely come to take his life. Epithus, the father of Antonis, the leader of the suitors, plans to take out Odysseus. After a short battle, Laertes is blessed by Athena, and he manages to take out Epithus, the leader of the opposing group, and the war ends with the help of Athena. Zeus then commands Athena to end the conflict and bring the warring families to peace. The Odyssey is a reminder of how Homer felt about his Greek culture and the ideal man. While Odysseus embarks on marvelous adventures that a mortal could only dream of, his goal remains the same from beginning to end. He only wants to head home to be with his wife and child. Throughout his travels, Odysseus encounters many civilizations and cultures, but still chooses his own Greek culture in the end. When he is trapped with the beautiful Calypso and even promised immortality by her, Odysseus rejects all of this in exchange for his family, his Greek culture, and his Greek civilization. That was the Odyssey by Homer. To watch the next literature summary, click on the link in the description or at the end of this video. If you enjoyed this summary, consider clicking like. It goes a long way toward helping me grow this channel. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. I know that scar, master. <laughs> Do not speak. We upload new videos every week, so subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the like button as well. Click the notification bell to be notified of when we upload these videos. See you on the next episode of Culture Screen.